My name is Alex Emergen and I'm a product and support engineer here at Advanced Motion Controls. Today I'll be discussing proper wiring practices and EMI. Electromagnetic interference or EMI is also referred to as noise. This is common in factories and industrial applications where EMI is frequent and sensitive electronic equipment may be subject to noise caused by servo motors and drives. This in turn can adversely affect system and machine performance. Some of the more common cost-effective methods which help to protect the system against EMI include cable shielding, proper grounding, and cable routing practices. I'll be discussing various methods which help to suppress EMI and also help mitigate its effects. The primary source of noise originate from the drive's output power stage having a typical DVDT of about 1 volt per nanosecond. The DVDT refers to the change in voltage over the change in time. The active power devices modulate the full DC bus voltage by switching the transistors on and off very rapidly. The disadvantage to switching is that it generates electrical noise that disrupts other parts of the system. The output stage can transition from 0 volts to the full power supply voltage in nanoseconds. The high DVDT that accompanies this PWM output can couple noise back to the signal lines. EMI, either as radiated or conducted, can disrupt the proper operation of electronic equipment. If sets of wires run close to each other, signals between the wires tend to couple one another, consequently introducing noise, also referred to as crosstalk. Crosstalk may have negative effects if the coupling occurs between power and signal cables. EMI can potentially affect sensitive components in the system, such as sensors, analog signals, as well as communication and feedback data. Cables are susceptible to EMI, both as a source acting as an antenna and as a receiver picking up noise radiated from other equipment. Cable shielding is an effective way to protect data against EMI, reduce emissions, and increase robustness. Twisted pairs of wires are also quite effective in reducing magnetic pickup because the enclosed area is small and the signals induced in successive twists cancel. Use of a twisted shielded pair for the feedback wires is recommended. Ground the shield at one end only to the drive chassis ground. The motor power wires are a considerable source of noise and the feedback wires are susceptible to receiving it. Placing signal cables next to power cables can allow PWM switching noise to couple from power lines onto the adjacent signal lines. To avoid this, route the motor power wires and motor feedback wires in separate cable bundles and far apart. As the distance between the lines increase, the effect of inductive coupling is reduced. Cable lengths should ideally be trimmed to fit the application and routed in such a way to minimize their length. Do not coil excess cable of motor power and feedback together. If excess cable cannot be shortened, it should be laid in an S or figure 8 pattern to minimize interference. If cables must cross, make sure that the two cross at a 90 degree angle as this is the angle of minimum coupling. If the command input is a plus or minus 10 volt analog signal, it is recommended to use differential inputs at the drive to eliminate common mode noise. In doing so, EMI common to both signals will be ignored. A differential signal is more immune to electromagnetic interference than a single at an input because the common mode noise signal is cancelled at the receiver when the different signal is taken. Network commands such as EtherCAT or CANOPEN are not susceptible to this type of noise. Now let's talk about grounding. Proper grounding is critical to diminish the effects of all noise sources by providing a low impedance path to ground for EMI currents. In most servo systems, the case grounds of all the system components should be connected to a single protective earth ground point in a star configuration. Grounding the case grounds at a central PE ground point through a single low resistance wire reduces the chance for ground loops and helps to minimize high frequency voltage differentials between components. All ground wires must be of a heavy gauge and be as short as possible. The following should be securely grounded at the central PE grounding point. Motor chassis, controller chassis, power supply chassis, and servo drive chassis. When multiple drives are installed in a single application, precaution regarding ground loops must be taken. Whenever there are two or more possible current paths to a ground connection, damage can occur or noise can be introduced in the system. These wiring schemes are commonly practiced but often contribute to noise problems. Each additional node in the chain 
adds to the amount of noise and unnecessarily lulls the connector's niche link. The following rules apply to all multiple access installations, regardless of the number of power supplies used. Do not use wire shield to carry motor current or power. Chassis ground the cable shield at one end only. Never daisy chain any power or DC common connections. It is imperative to run separate power supply leads to each drive directly from the power supply filter capacitor and to use a star connection. Let's see what else we could do to reduce noise. PWM switching controls the output by turning the power devices on and off at a high frequency. The fast change in voltage, the DVDT, appears as capacitively coupled noise spikes on adjacent signal lines. These noise spikes coincide with the PWM switching where there is a spike every time the power device switches on and every time the power device switches off. Hence, noise appears at twice the switching frequency. In this oscilloscope capture, noise on the incremental encoder output coincides with twice the switching frequency of a 10 kHz servo drive. Noise appears on both channels at 50 microsecond intervals. A ferrite core is a passive device used to suppress high frequency EMI. Ferrite cores prove to be an effective and inexpensive way to reduce EMI while also very easy to install. To employ this in a system, wrap the motor power leads around the core two to five times. A single pass through is considered one turn. Make sure to strip back the cable shield and only wrap the motor wires and leave the motor case ground or shield wire out of the loop. The suppression core should be located as near to the drive as possible. Adding a ferret filter significantly reduces the noise being coupled on the encoder lines. Wrapping the motor phase leads around the core two times showed a significant reduction of EMI. Inductive filter cards are added in series with the motor and are used to increase the load inductance in order to meet the minimum requirement of the drive. They also serve to counteract the effects of line capacitance found in long cable runs and in high voltage systems. These filter cards also have the added benefit of reducing the amount of PWM noise that couples onto the signal lines. Higher current spikes on the drive outputs generate higher noise. With extra inductance added to the system, filter cards help with reducing these current spikes. Conducted emissions testing focuses on the emissions generated by the servo drive that are transmit along the AC power line. With the use of test equipment, a spectrum analyzer and a line impedance stabilization network, the servo drive can be tested to measure the level of conducted emissions to verify they comply within the limits set for Class A devices. A typical frequency range for conducted emission standards is set for 350 kHz to 30 MHz. It is apparent in the frequency response of peak detector testing that with no use of additional filtering, peak amplitudes are above the acceptable QP limit line and the device would not pass compliance testing. Peak detection retains the peak value of the emitted noise signal. Peak detection testing indicates the worst case scenario since the peak values will always be greater than the quasi-peaks. Regulatory compliance testing requires quasi-peak amplitudes to be below the quasi-peak limit line for the product to pass. It is possible for noise generated by the servo drive to leak onto the main AC power and get distributed to nearby equipment. AC EMI filters are effective at filtering high frequency noise from being conducted out over the AC power lines. By connecting a filter, noise on the AC line can be greatly attenuated. With the use of a single stage AC power line filter, high frequency conducted emissions are greatly attenuated and meet the set emission limit. If further filtering is required, a two stage line filter can be used. The purpose of these graphs are to display the effect filters have regarding emissions. These tests are not performed in a certified compliance testing lab but the goal is to serve with data replicating pre-compliance testing and how emissions are mitigated through the use of various filters. Radiated emissions refer to the release of electromagnetic energy from the servo drive that are broadcast unintentionally and propagate away from the device. This presents an issue when the servo drive has significant amounts of radiated emissions that may interfere with the operation of other electronics in proximity. Radiated emissions testing accurately measures and assesses the electromagnetic field strength of the emissions that are generated and broadcast by the servo drive to ensure they comply within Class A emission limits that are set. The frequency range for these measurements are commonly set between 30 MHz to 1 GHz. 
it is apparent in the frequency response that there are peaks that are about 30 dB above the acceptable limit line. With the use of a single stage power line filter, some noise is attenuated, but the drive still fails to meet the required QP limit line. With the use of a single stage filter, as well as a snap on ferrite, most of the radiated emissions have reached below the acceptable QP limit line. However, there is still noise present at 30 MHz, roughly 10 dB above the limit line. This can be further reduced by using a two-stage power line filter or by following any of the previous methods described in this video. For any technical related question or support required, please submit a case through our support portal or contact technical support directly. We would love to be a part of your application and assist you along the way.